Let's talk about factoring and binomials for right now. Um, and multiplying them together, we're going to talk about quadratic equation and uh, all of those fun things that go along with it. <clears throat> so a binomial is when you have um, x plus 3. This is a binomial because it has two things inside the brackets. A monomial is just a thing like x. A trinomial is x plus, you know, uh, y plus 3 or something along those lines. It just means how many things are inside it, added or subtracted. So let's talk about first about um, multiplying these things together. Like if we have x onto x plus 3, that just becomes x times x. We bring this into here, we bring it into here. x times x becomes x squared plus 3x. Okay, so this is basically like saying x times x plus x times 3. And that is how we work with a monomial and a binomial together. When you work with a two binomial side by side, let's say x plus 3 and x plus 6. When this happens, we do a thing called FOIL. Right over here, F-O-I-L, which is the first outside, inside, and last. What that means is basically take, take the first term from each binomial, x times x, and we'll do that first. So that'll be x times x plus the outsides, x times 6, so x times 6, plus the inside, 3 times x, plus the, the last, which is 3 times 6. We'll work this all out. We're going to get x times x is going to be x squared, plus x times 6 is just 6x plus 3x, plus 18. Of course, these are the same factor of x, uh, or same power of x, x to the 1. So we can say x squared plus 6 times 6 plus 3 is 9x, plus 18. So that's how you take two binomials and multiply them out to find out what they're actually equal to uh, in terms of the just the regular express product, I guess. So I'm going to leave that there for now. Um, so let's try another one. So if you have x plus y onto a plus b, all we have is x times a, so xa plus xb plus ya plus yb. And that's as simple as it gets, just like that. So the next question is, what happens when we have the final product, like the numbers, and we want to work back to what the binomials are. In this situation, we would have something, let's talk about a binomial and a monomial first. So let's say we have x squared plus x equals uh, 9, okay? We need to solve this equation, and we can solve it many ways, um, but let's take out an x. This is called factoring out an x. So we take an x out of here, and we say, okay, what does x have to be multiplied by to get x squared? So x times x is x squared, so x must be inside here. We'll work through this in a second. So what do I have to multiply x by to get x? Just 1, because it's just itself. So we do x plus 1 in there, and we leave our 9 the same. To just to double check this, let's go through and, and multiply this out to see if it equals what we thought it did. x times x is x squared. x times 1 is just plus x equals 9. So this is the same, therefore we know we factored it properly. So that's the first way to factor out a common factor out of all these things. Let's try just one more a little complicated, a little more complicated, and say we have 3x squared plus 6x equals 9. So what do we do here? We can take x out of the equation. So we have x out of here onto 3x, because x times 3x is 3x squared, plus we can have 2, or uh, sorry, 6 here, because 6 times x is 6x. This is correct, but it's not the least, it's not the best it can be. Because 3 and 6 are in here, we can take out a 3 as well. So we can say 3x onto x plus 2. That's because I took a 3 out of here, divide by 3, divide by 3, I get 3's cancel, and I get 6 over 3, which is equal to 2. So now I can check this again. So let's do 3x times x is 3x squared, plus 3 times 2 is 6 times the x equals 9. 
So we factored that properly. Let's talk about binomials and two binomials multiplied together. So we've talked about how to multiply them through. Now let's talk about how to go back. So let's say we have x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. This is the simplest example I can think of. So we have to think, we have to put this into two brackets somehow. And I'm going to show you a couple ways to do this. The x's always have to be on the left, okay? Because in the end, we're going to do this FOIL, right? The first term is going to be x times x, which is going to be x squared. The outsides is next, and the insides and the last. So let's talk about the last first. We need to put numbers here that multiply together to give 1. The only two numbers that multiply together to give 1 are 1 and 1. So we know that a 1 has to go here and a 1 has to go here. Now the only thing left is to determine what are the signs inside here. Let's just guess. Let's say it's plus and minus, just to give a thing. Now we can check that by saying we're going to multiply this out again and see if it's the same as our first equation. So let's do our first. x times x becomes x squared. Outsides, x times minus 1 becomes minus x. Insides, 1 times x becomes plus x. Plus 1 times minus 1 becomes a minus 1. So we know already that this is not correct because we end up with a minus 1. So we can't have opposite signs. They have to be equal signs. So let's try changing this to a negative. Now we're going to have x times x is x squared minus x minus x plus 1. So that this term now matches this term. And this term now matches this term. So that's excellent. However, 2x does not equal negative 2x. So we'll try our last combination that is possible, which is going to be uh, pluses here. x times x is x squared plus x plus x plus 1 equals 0. So we have x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. We factored it properly. Now you may ask, what is the reason to factor these things? Well, once we factored it out, we say x squared plus 2x plus 1 equals 0. What does x equal? That's the big question. What is x equal to? Because we want to solve for x. The way to solve for x here is to factor it like we did into x plus 1, x plus 1, and equals 0. Now the way we factor this is, if these two things are multiplied equals 0, one of them has to be equal to 0. So we can say two different things x plus 1 is equal to 0 from the first, and x plus 1 is equal to 0 from the second. So we take our 1 over, we get x equals negative 1. This is the solution to this problem. And we'll talk about graphing this later and uh, doing all those great things with it. So that's how we solve for x. The last thing I'm going to show you is solving using the quadratic equation. But I think I'll show that in another video.